Medical information obtained from our website or on the live show is not intended to be a substitute for professional care. If you have, or you suspect you might, have an illness or other medical condition, you should consult a health care provider. The opinions expressed on this radio program are not necessarily those of the sports doctor, this radio show, or their sponsors. Hey, everybody, welcome to Chicago Live. It's the Sports Doctor. I'm Dr. Bob Wild, sports podiatrist. All things sports, medicine, fitness, and wellness. Brought to you by Global School Wear, school uniforms by Tommy Hilfiger, Lower Extremity Review and MVP Parent Magazines, UK Health Radio. Got a great doubleheader, Deborah Slider, RN. She's a coordinator with the Lower Extremity Amputation Prevention LEAP Alliance. She returns along with Michael McAleese. He's the owner of the Somar School of Holistic Massage and Reflexology in our neck of the woods down is Grove, Illinois. Then it's the Sports Doctors Inn, some Bob Guy to Wisdom, your emails. First, let's Deborah Slider. Welcome back to the Sports Doctor. Thank you, Dr. Bob. I'm really glad to be back with you again. Thank you for having me. You know, in sports, out of sports, diabetes is such an epidemic. It's such a scourge. Gosh, they had to change the name years ago because there were so many children involved mm. with, uh, with diabetes. And sometimes yeah. the horrible, horrible end game, uh, wounds and amputations, is a much bigger problem than, than people realize. Deborah, give us uh, some background on yourself and the Leap Alliance. Yes, I was a public health nurse for, gosh, 30 plus years. Uh, I worked in just about every program uh, that we had in public health, uh, went out on home visits, you know, visiting children and families. Uh, then I uh, left that for oh, about five years. I went to um, uh, Blue Cross and Blue Shield. I was a case manager uh, for about two and a half years with uh, chronic illnesses. And uh, then I went to Amerigroup, which is one of the... Uh, companies that manages uh, Medicaid in Georgia. So I was a good fit for that coming from public health. So I did that for about two and a half years. And uh, then uh, I joined up uh, with Dr. Rubin with uh, Leap Alliance. And uh, I've been involved in that for about... uh, My My old podiatry professor. At the yes. Illinois College of Podiatric Medicine, the famous Dr. Larry Rubin, who's innovated so many different things in the world of Medicare and podiatry alliances, uh, and of course this uh, situation. So you've been on all sides, including the government side, the insurance side. This makes mm-hmm. you uh, a great expert to try to deal with the challenges of uh, putting together these kinds of programs. True? Very true. Very true. Good luck to you. Right. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) I I talk talk a little bit about the, uh, how big a problem this is uh, and the fact of what a big deal prevention is and the whole idea of saving limbs. A lot of people don't realize, especially in underprivileged areas, Talk a little bit about that, uh, Deborah. Yes, it, it's truly a horrible epidemic with uh, chronic foot ulcers that uh, so many times lead to amputations of the toes, the, the feet, the legs. Um, and, you know, having gone through COVID, uh, so many people put off going to the podiatrist or to their doctor, uh, you know, we were more or less locked in our homes for, you know, quite some time. So that added to the the horrible epidemic of um, amputations. And, uh, you know, when you look at the uh, American Diabetes Association, they have said that 80% of amputations can be avoided by just having an annual 
complete diabetic foot exam. 80%. You know, podiatry, Deborah, has been mm-hmm. at the forefront. Uh, wound care is a huge area today in podiatry. Yes. Uh, and podiatry, of course, you know, the foot, one of the furthest areas from the heart, often over the years mm-hmm. was the first time a patient realized they, they should be paying attention to diabetes. Maybe they you know, doc, my foot is, is numb. You know, my feet mm-hmm. are burning, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. So podiatry has always been at the forefront of uh, trying to tip off uh, the uh, population. You know, awareness is such a big deal. Education is such a big deal. Right. So, so LEAP, LEAP is about putting together <clears throat> programs for communities, for schools, for um, uh, uh, districts to try to pay much more attention to foot screening, Deborah. Yes, yes, absolutely. You know, I'm really on a mission to have nurses join me in this fight against this epidemic of amputations. Uh, you know, any nurse out there that's listening that wants to be a champion or a hero in their community, in their community. Uh, you know, if they would reach out to me, I would tell them step by step how to get involved and, and you know, how to help their community in, in this fight. Uh, you know, a lot of times we join up with uh, the Lions Club to do just simple foot exams. Uh, and from that, uh, you know, they can be referred to uh, their own podiatrist or we can give them a list of podiatrists, you know, that can uh, work with them and, and help them before, you know, this becomes such a severe problem with them. Uh, you know, prevention is, is, needs to be looked at more than treating after it happens. We, we've yeah, got well, it. Well, with our, mm-hmm. our, our friend, uh, uh, Dr. Rubin, I want to ask you more about uh, his involvement in a second. Everybody listening to The Sports Doctor, I'm Dr. Bob Weil, sports podiatrist. Go to my website, sportsdoctorradio.com. If you go over the radio shows, you go back years, international guests, national guests, local guests, all sorts of topics, sports medicine, fitness, wellness. If you go over newspaper articles and magazines, ton of stuff, a lot of new excitement with MVP Parent Magazine. A lot of uh, areas of prevention from concussions to what is the best shoe for you or your son or daughter. We have thousands of followers. I can't tell you how many guests I get from uh, Twitter uh, and LinkedIn. Uh, and uh, so uh, if you want to join in, we have great education added to the mix at Sports Doc DOC Radio talking about the uh, prevention of, uh, uh, gosh, amputations. How has been the cooperation, Deborah, of podiatry and the medical profession uh, in, in regarding these kinds of screenings and uh, putting together these programs? We, you know, some have been very receptive. I think a lot of the problem is doctors just don't realize how much uh, Medicare will reimburse them for doing preventive care in their practice. In fact, you know, they, they reimburse uh, the doctors quite handsomely, but the doctors just aren't aware of it. They, they may be... Well, and I've always, uh, you know, the funny, we did, I've, I've done sports screenings for 100 years, foot, mm-hmm. event, foot screenings at the health club, sometimes at different uh, uh, youth uh, uh, sports organizations. And often, mm-hmm. again, any doctor who's involved in those kinds of screening programs is getting great exposure. They're getting right. great community exposure or a park district or a yes. little league or whatever, whatever it happens to be. I think it's a big, big win-win mm-hmm. uh, in order to, to get the uh, uh, information out. How, uh, when, uh, uh, Dr. Rubin, who was a guest on the show before, uh, when did he start uh, LEAP? Oh, gosh. I think it was like, if I remember, it was like, uh, was it 13 years ago, maybe a little longer than that? And uh, they, they were successful uh, in uh, Las Vegas, uh, you know, getting this started up. And then COVID hit. 
and they had. Yeah, I, I mean, I yes, yeah. I, I would imagine uh-huh. every state organization in podiatry and the American Podiatry Association should be all over this. Yeah, uh, as well as some of the different supergroups, the groups of numerous, numerous podiatrists with mm-hmm. multi-state practices uh, that would be able to incorporate all of this um, of prevention. Again, mm-hmm. diabetes by itself is an epidemic. It's huge. It, uh, it, it is expensive. It'll break us financially, it, yes. let alone, you know, the obesity side. The child, I've been talking about childhood obesity for 25 years, give or take a few weeks. Oh, no. What's the website, Deborah? people could find out about LEAP? It's uh, information at LEAP, L-E-A-P, Alliance. Dot org. Deborah, what are some of the professions? I would assume general medicine, the uh, uh, primary care doctor. I would yes. think vascular people, the mm-hmm. circulation world would yes. want to be part of the team. Uh, 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 is that part of the team that you look to put together with podiatry? Yes, it is. Uh, you know, we, we look for primary care physicians. Uh, to work with uh, a podiatrist in in their area so they can have cross referrals. Uh, you know, many times a podiatrist will, will get a patient that maybe doesn't have a PCP, so he can refer, you know, that patient to the uh, PCP and, and vice versa. If uh, the primary care uh, doctor's patient doesn't have a podiatrist, you know, they can work together. Yes. And uh, also, you know, the vascular doctors, they are so important, you know, because we have to get a good bloodstream, you know, down to those lower extremities. Yes. For you know, I'll tell you mm-hmm. also, Led, you, you need big time nutrition yes. awareness and yes. counseling, as well as the, one of the most popular topics on the sports talk, we call it the mental game which is the challenges of trying to get these programs moving, uh, trying Mm -hmm. to get participation, the education. Um, uh, Isn't LEAP International? Who's, who's, is it South Africa? Yes, yes. Dr. Rubin has been speaking, um, you know, with uh, this group in South Africa that that is wanting so much. You know, they have uh, a really high rate of amputation. And uh, so he's definitely been working with them. And, you know, when you think about it, Lions Club, you know, that we work yes. with, they're, they're yes. worldwide. So, you know, this yes. is just such Yeah, we want to get open... them on. We're going to definitely, we want to get them on. Again, the Lions Club attention to children's fitness. Mm-hmm. We've talked about for 100 years, these groups that have paid attention to health and wellness for families, for children, for school systems. And it's you. The fitness side is huge in fighting diabetes. Mm -hmm. Uh, The activity side, the exercise side, as well as the nutrition side, as well as the the medical side. And what we try to do, uh, absolutely, and having uh, uh, guests like yourself on, uh, Dr. Larry on, is to continue to raise the enthusiasm and awareness. You know, one of my guests, Debbie Peterson, was a longtime mayor on the West Coast. She'll be coming on in a couple of weeks. And you okay. know, her whole expertise is interactive government, <clears throat> talking to her about what does it take to get these local governments to really pay attention to participating. And besides saying good luck to you, she had some great ideas. What do you think, Deborah? <laughs> you know, I, I think that would be great. Um, you yeah. know, we, we've just got... Wow. I, I was looking, uh, I guess it was yesterday, at, at just teenagers, you know, that are becoming type 2 uh, diabetics. And uh, I, I was actually looking on the ADA website, and it, it's just, it, it's incredible. They're, they're yeah. saying that if we don't get a handle on this, you're going to have over 200,000 under yeah, the age it'll break of 20. Yeah. Uh, yeah, an obese child who grows up, besides the whole mental nightmare side, yes, bullying, yes. the belittling, et cetera, oh, yes. is, is dollars and cents mm-hmm. five times as expensive for a child who's not dealing with the high blood pressure, the tendency to other kinds of... The joint problems, the ankle problems, the knee problems, mechanically, 
because That's of the right. obesity. So this is a mm -hmm. uh, this is a huge contest. Uh, it's amazing. Even when the first lady Michelle Obama paid all this attention, you mm -hmm. know, to children's fitness and the participation, uh, we're still treading water. In, in so many ways, and that, that's the beginning of the prevention paradigm, are the kids uh, and, and this whole idea, where do all these 13-year-old diabetics come from? Of course, social media. So the education and awareness side, Deborah, is we mm -hmm. want to keep you and your colleagues, people who are participating, uh, Dr. Rubin, in the mix, on the, on the sports doctor because continuing to get the word out and getting the participation of podiatry and all of these allied groups, as well as the nursing world like you're involved with, right? Right, absolutely. Yes, we, we can build those coalitions between, you know, the PCP yeah. and the podiatrist and yeah. the vascular. I'll tell you who else you yeah. need, Deborah. We need mm -hmm. psychology. We, we need the psychologists. We need that, that whole mental side to be yes. included. Uh, how many people have I added to your team since we started the show, Deborah? <laughs> <laughs> it's a couple. It, it, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Good. Good. Uh, well, that's again. We want to continue to get the word out um, and the this this whole idea. School systems really could be such tremendously helpful in this whole idea. 15 years ago, I had to fight them locally. They were going to drop gym class. They were going to drop oh, uh, uh, PE. <clears throat> yeah. So that, that contest uh, still is going on. And of mm -hmm. course, the pandemic multiplied things times 100. All it of a did. sudden, uh, there, was, there was all of this activity uh, uh, going on. So uh, I think, uh, you know, keeping the momentum going and uh, uh, including... Uh, some of these different team members that are in, involved with you. Give me again the site people could find out about uh, Leap, Deborah. Yes, it's information at leapalliance.org. Information at leapalliance.org. Uh, yes. And again, I want to thank you for coming back and taking part, um, uh, Deborah. And I know you're still celebrating Georgia's uh, national championship out there in, in, uh, in, in Georgia land. And Absolutely. Uh, again, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations to you to what you're doing. Thank you. Hold on. Hold on, sure. Deborah. We'll be right back, everybody. It's the sports doctor. Hold on. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. Hey everybody, Dr. Bob here. LER, Lower Extremity Review Magazine, is celebrating their 10th anniversary. It's been a decade of providing key uh, clinical and practical information about concerns, conditions, and treatment solutions for the lower extremity, both sports and non-sports alike. LER is the only multidisciplinary publication for doctors of all specialties, educators, therapists, and trainers. They inform practitioners on current developments in the diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of lower extremity injuries. LER prides itself on editorial integrity and evidence-based content. Their tagline, collaborative care for better outcomes, says it all. Hey, colleagues, go to lermagazine.com. Hey, everybody. MVP Parent Magazine is special. Evidence-based topics on all areas of youth sports. Rich Dubin, a sports dad himself, takes his three decades of publishing. He just celebrated the 12th anniversary of the acclaimed LER Lower Extremity Review Magazine, one of sports doctors' key supporters, and he pours it into MVP Parent. Factual evidence-based info on such key topics like physical and mental training, nutrition, injury awareness, treatment, recovery, and prevention, I am proud to be a contributor to MVP Parent with the Sports Doctor is In article in each issue. Go to MVPParent.com, MVPParent.com.
com. Hey, it's Dr. Bob. School uniforms by Tommy Hilfiger is setting a new standard within the school uniform market. More schools are understanding the value that uniforms provide, school pride and identification being one of them. Another is the well-recognized reduction of student pressure to keep up with classmates in the real world of what to wear each day to school. School Uniforms by Tommy Hilfiger provides amazing quality and value to its partner schools and families. It is truly the first brand in this market that students are excited about wearing. Go to the website, globalschoolwear.com, globalschoolwear.com. If you live in or near Aurora, Illinois, and you're into sports, fitness at any level, or your son and daughter is, you cannot forget about your feet. Your feet affect everywhere else. There are complex motions that come into play, especially in sports. Your ankles, knees, hips, and back all are affected with your foot mechanics. Uh, Come visit the office, uh, Dr. Bob, uh, and get evaluated. Uh, Check what shoes are best for you. I offer prescription orthotics, which is usually one of the major tools for treatment and prevention of foot-related ankle and leg problems. Also, enhancing performance. Step or two quicker. Call 630-898-3505 or go to sportsdoctorradio.com. Hey, everybody, live from Chicago, we're back. It's the Sports Doctor. I'm Dr. Bob Wild, sports podiatrist. We're waiting any second for uh, massage therapist Mike McAleese to join us. Uh, once the music stops, uh, otherwise we want to make a quick mention. Hey, Tom Brady retired. Wow, mm-hmm. it's a um, big deal. Michael, you with me? I'm here, Bob. All right. Okay. Here we got him. We got him. Michael McAleese, numerous time guest. He's the owner of the Somar School of Holistic Massage and Reflexology. Hey, Michael, welcome back. Hey, it's good to be back, Bob. Always Great. Good Michael's to you. also Always a movement fun. coach. Michael, Great. give us some background on you and uh, the school. Okay. Uh, I have been a licensed massage therapist for. Just about 30 years, uh, my wife and I both, uh, we opened the, the massage school uh, as a state board of higher education school in uh, 2002. Uh, I've also been teaching reflexology for about uh, 29 years as well. And uh, so our massage program is the best in the country. <laughs> you know, the ability of uh the explosion of massage in sports medicine. Uh, you know, you and I, we've probably had uh, a half a dozen radio shows talking about that over the past, I don't know, 10 years, give it take a little bit. Uh, the explosion of massage in the health and wellness side of things, the anti-stress thing. And, uh, you know, the late, great Bob Guida, my colleague, gosh, in the late 70s and 80s, uh, talked so much about soft tissue therapy, being one of the strongest healers of the body uh, uh, we had. Uh, so the, the massage therapy's really gotten uh, uh, tremendous notoriety, has in the past decade or two. Yeah, it has. And, and what's even better, Bob, is that science, and there's been a lot of studies, a lot of research done on soft tissue work, and it's, everything's coming out, you know, good for stress management, pain management, overall general well-being. So it, it's kind of nice to have um, science actually prove that soft tissue work is beneficial. Oh, yeah, the measuring characteristics, you know, stimulating uh, blood flow. Uh, and, yeah. uh, you know, it was interesting because American medicine for generations was hands-off. It was a, a pill, an injection, or surgery. Uh, in almost all instances, the chiropractic profession really brought hands-on into the uh, uh, the world along with, you know, massage therapy. And the health and wellness side, the mind-body side, I think is why so many spas and health spas and salons include 
uh, massage therapy, right? Yeah, correct. I mean, the whole mind, body, spirit connection is just, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's taken off. People are starting to take care of themselves now, Bob, which is really, really nice to see. Self-care is everything. You know, it's interesting. We have experts on all the time, as you know, in all the different areas. Uh, we spend a lot of time on what I call the mental game, whether you're the best athlete in the world, their coach, their parents, their school system, all these areas. Somebody's trying to stick to their exercise program, uh, high performance, trying to stay on top, fighting for positions, et cetera, et cetera. You can't do anything without the mental game being such a, uh, a big part of uh, so much of the awareness of the uh, a lot of uh, of the of the new medicine, uh, gosh, there's not a sports team at at uh, gosh uh, college uh, professional level that doesn't include massage therapy big time, right? Yeah, uh, a lot of colleges do. A lot of professional sports teams do. I know a, a number of people who actually work for a couple of uh, the, the sporting teams. Chicago Blackhawks, we have a grad student who's actually uh, their strength and conditioning coach, but he's also their massage therapist as well. So, And I have a good friend. She uh, works at Northwestern University, and she's the massage therapist for the uh, football team and the girls' tennis and swimming. So, yeah, colleges are there. They do have massage therapists on staff uh, and the professional teams, too, and it's good to see that. I think, again, it's always felt, and Guida always felt it was one of the most um, effective enhancers of recovery. You know, now that rest and recovery has become such a big topic, it took a long, long time uh, selling that, especially to serious athletes where more is better has always been the philosophy, and the body would break down even from, from repetitive motion injuries. You know, the kids doing 200 double and triple jumps a week in figure skating, uh, and all of a sudden, the, you know, the joints, the rest of the body uh, uh, breaking down. So massage therapy's capability for recovery uh, has become a real big deal, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. It, it's, it's, uh, it's a benefit. Like I said earlier, uh, research and science is showing that massage therapy post any game, any tennis game or, you know, you name it. Uh, the rest day is really the most important day to get the massage, to have the massage done. So, yeah, rest days, people are starting to see that as self-care. And uh, we're, we're seeing the athletes staying a lot longer in the game, not so much in the game, a lot longer because of, uh, of the turnaround of uh, taking care of themselves, uh, getting soft tissue work, and just having a rest day. Oh, yeah, that's what we just, you know, the second or two before we clicked in with you, I was just mentioning Tom Brady at 45 years old. The phenomenon of the 40-year-old athletes, the late 30-year-old athletes, uh, has become such a, uh, you know, the world of nutrition, the science of training, all of these things have gone into, but rest and recovery, of course, is such a, a big, big part of it. You know, so is the reducing of stress and the, in that, in that uh, uh, scenario. Uh, Michael, what's the, the, the site to, for people to find out about the school in Downers Grove? What's the website? Sure. It's www.somars, S-O-H-M-A-R.com. How many website, students do you usually have at the school at any uh, given time? How long is the program? Uh, anywhere from 10 to 15 uh, at any given time. Our program is, is pretty uh, broken up. We're People can start when they want to start, so we have different levels of education. So it's it's a nice. Uh, it's been working for us, where the senior students become mentors to the newer students. So um, I, it's been working. Yeah, I for remember us. when I was there speaking at your school to some of your the students and teachers. A very very impressive group. How long does it take for somebody to become a massage therapist? With the school, how long is the program if they're uh, going as a consistent student? Uh, it, our program is 11 weeks. Uh, not 11 weeks, I'm sorry. Uh, 44 weeks. <laughs> not 11. 44 weeks. And it's three days a week, Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And we have a day and an evening class on Mondays and Thursdays, and Saturdays, uh, 9 to 3. So 
Yeah, just three days is part time. Nobody has to quit a full time job just to go to school. At least not to my school. Yeah, well, that, that's a very attractive uh, variable. Again, where somebody is being able to phase, you know, another uh, profession in, and not necessarily have to quit what they're doing, uh, is, right. is, uh, is is very very attractive. What about the whole world, Michael, of reflexology? Tell us about reflexology. Well, reflexology, uh, the theory behind reflexology, are there are pressure points on the foot, the bottom and side that correspond to the different organs and systems of the body. And by uh, pushing or just doing some reflexology on these areas, it helps the body to, to relax, number one, because it works as close to the central nervous system as possible, just like massage, any body work. So to help the person to relax by uh, working these reflex points, uh, really, it makes a big difference. You know, we we're talking about. Yeah, I want to ask arrested. you. I'm going to ask you more about that. I'm going to ask you more about that when we come back. Everybody listening okay. to the Sports Doctor, we're talking with Michael McAleese, movement coach, owner of the School of Holistic Massage. We'll be right back, everybody. Sports Doctor. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. Hey everybody, we are back. Welcome back. Live from Chicago with the Sports Doctor. I'm Dr. Bob Weil. We're talking with Michael McAleese. He is the owner of the Sobar School of Holistic Massage and Reflexology down in Grove, Illinois. And we were uh, uh, talking about massage therapy. We also had started some feedback with reflexology. Uh, you mentioned, Michael, the science that's coming in that you're really seeing in the world of, reflex- in the world of massage therapy. How is that in the world of reflexology? Well, there's a lot of research done that's been done on uh, just the science of reflexology. Uh, but the biggest thing that really helped kickstart uh, reflexology in the, the 80s, in 1980s, was uh, Michigan uh, University of Michigan Nursing School actually was granted, I believe, $8 million to do a study on reflexology and uh, pain management for women living with breast cancer. Uh, and I think this, the study, the research went on for a couple of years, but the final outcome was reflexology was the number one thing that actually helped women who who are going through breast cancer through any of the treatments to help with pain management and relaxation. So that really helped kickstart a lot more uh, of people looking at reflexology as something, uh, you know, just to, for relaxation and pain management. So I get a lot of clients well, who those do come are gigantic. in. Yeah, the pain management is a gigantic area. We were all familiar professionally with the nightmare of the opioid epidemic that yeah. we're still buried in. Pain pills and more pain pills and serious consequences. Uh, so natural ability uh, to deal with pain is a gigantic area. And I would think, again, uh, that that be something. Uh, how is general medicine? I know general medicine has really embraced uh, reflexology from A to Z. Sports medicine has. Uh, how about reflexology when it comes to general medicine, Michael, and their acceptance of interaction with? Uh, from what my clients have told me, uh, when they have told their doctors that they're seeing a reflexologist and, and you know, they're, they're okay with it. So to say that general medicine is embracing reflexology like they do massage, it's there. It's not quite where it should be, but in time, in time. Yeah. Welcome to the contest. Uh, <laughs> many times in, in some of these, uh, 
uh, situations. Again, you know, the uh, uh, holistic side of um, sports medicine, all, all areas of, uh, of medicine, senior citizens. I mean, the whole world of um, fall prevention and physical therapy, uh, because I wanted to ask you all, you're a movement coach also, aren't you, Michael? Yes, sir, I am. Um, yep. What's a movement I'm coach? Back. What's a movement what, coach? What's a, I, what's a movement well, coach? Like my byline always says, I help others to help themselves to move better, to breathe better, and to feel better. Uh, part of what I do uh, with my clients who come and see me for movement is, um, you know, they're moving uh, non-optimally. And uh, I, it's just another set of eyes just watching how they're walking, how they're sitting, uh, maybe how they're doing a bench press. Uh, I do uh, get a lot of referrals from a physical therapist, uh, especially with the aging population, which I am now a part of. I'm 67 years old. But, uh, you know, so just helping people to move, helping them to walk better. You know, I, I look at the foot um, a lot and how the people, how their gait pattern is, how their yes, foot you is do. actually hitting uh, the ground. You know, that uh, the, the, all movement starts with the foot, and the yeah. foot affects everything. And this is, exactly. again, part of the information we've been playing with for 40 years on the sports doctors to get the, uh, the sports world non-sports world alike to understand how important these foot mechanics are and the role of not only strengthening the foot and ankle, uh, but the biomechanical positioning of the foot, proper shoes, orthotic therapy, uh, and, and working balance, uh, you know, getting these individuals to really pay big attention to balance, I guess has a lot to do with proper movement. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, hand-eye coordination uh, as well. Uh, with, with looking at the foot and, and assessing the foot and the movement, I actually bring that into both of my massage and reflexology programs. So anybody who graduates from our program has a great understanding about what's going on with the foot from the, from the ground up. Uh, I would hope so that, after five radio. I would hope so after five radio shows, Michael, you'd be including it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I do, Bob. You know I what do. I mean? Trust me. I, yeah. Although all, you know, those, you know, all those years ago when you, you you and I first met, that we were at an ice skating rink, if I recall, and we were both there to prevent injuries in these figure skaters that we were seeing forever. Everybody knows yeah. on the sports doctor that the 2010 Men's Olympic gold medal figure skating champion, Evan Lysacek, grew up here in Naperville, Illinois. The kid was 10 years old when I put orthotics in his skates. I'm still putting orthotics in 10-year-old skates. And, again, the whole idea of movement, injury prevention, strengthening all of these areas, uh, that's always been a big part of what you do, Michael, hasn't it? Yes, it has. You know, actually, about 15 years ago, Bob, I actually went back to school to redefine myself as a massage therapist. And it was all about movement. Uh, and uh, I, I'm very thankful for uh, a doctor named, Dr. Evan Ozar, if I can just name drop, uh, he really has made a difference in the way I look at uh, my clients now and myself, too, you know, because I have to practice what I preach. And, uh, and I learned a big lesson after having my total knee replacement uh, in 2021. Uh, I had to do all the things that I, I, I asked my clients to do. So, it, uh, I, yeah, it's... I know. I read, I read many of your complaints, sent you some positive vibes uh, when you went through that whole ordeal. Uh, you know, knee replacement is one of the most successful uh, replacement surgeries that are done. It's still major, major work. How are you doing with that? How long has it been? It's uh, August of 21, uh, 2021, and it, it's been an interesting journey, Bob. Uh, even though I have a titanium knee, and it's a beautiful knee when you look at the pictures. Uh, it just it feels different because it's not mine. But it uh, my leg, uh, my left leg where I had it uh, done, feels so much better. Uh, the pain I used to have is is ninety nine point nine percent off. Yes, that's a, yeah. that that's the main reason, and, and that's why paying such early attention to biomechanics, foot mechanics, uh, all the range of motion. All of these things are so key when we wonder why so many adults are wearing their joints out. 
why they wear yeah. the knee out or the, the hip uh, arthritis. Uh, uh, it's not that you could solve it all with proper foot mechanics, but, man, you should be paying much more attention uh, many yeah. times to the results as we see both, you know, up and down the chain of command. And you've always, uh, uh, in both reflexology and, and massage therapy, you work closely with the chiropractic world, don't you, Michael? Yes. Yes, we do. Uh, I still work with a few chiropractors that, uh, they refer people to me. I refer people back to them, and it, it's a winning. It's a winning combination. It's a win-win. Win. Michael McAleese, owner of Somar. I can't believe the time flew by. Michael, give me the website quickly again. People find out about the school and you and all your work. Sure. The website is www.sohmar.com, and you can also get a hold of me at info at somar.com. Fantastic. Michael, thanks so much for coming back, uh, giving us a little bit of insight. And uh, hold on, the sports doctor. Thanks, Michael McAlee. Hold on, Mike. Hey, everybody. It's Dr. Bob Weil, the sports doctor. I'm excited to announce the release of my new book co-written with Sharky Zartman, hashtag Hey Sports Parents, an essential guide for any parent with a child in sports. You know, Sharky is a former Hall of Fame volleyball player. She's the mom of two daughters who became Division I volleyball players. Together we have over 70 years of combined youth sports experience. The goal of the book, give you the essential tools and guidance to make your experience as a sports parent the best it could be. Hashtag Hey Sports Parents is divided into four sections. The first section, Sports Parenting 101. Sharky talks everything about uh, parenting, about coaching, that whole uh, interaction between parents and coaches, coaching your own kid. Uh, what's the, what are the things to really pay attention to? The second section is the Sports Doctors In, yours truly. Uh, my discussion of injury prevention and treatment, choosing the best shoes, Youth sports and drugs, essential exercises, the dilemma of youth football, orthotics. Third section, uh, experts speak out. We bring together eight different experts in nutrition and sports performance and mental training in all aspects of coaching in that section. The last section is the parents' perspective, some insights from about a half a dozen parents of athletes. So everyone, hey, get out your megaphone, spread the word. Now available on Amazon. Order now. You'll be more confident. So will your young athlete. Hashtag, hey, sports parents. Everybody, welcome back. It's the Sports Doctor. It's the Sports Doctor is in segment where we preview some upcoming guests and topics. We add some Bob Guida wisdom, answer a few emails. Great shows coming up quickly. I want to mention the Bruce Merrin Celebrity Speakers dot com. Uh, the first sports people he was involved with was Jackie Robinson and Muhammad Ali. He represented Elvis celebrating his 50th year. Uh, he's a champion. Great uh, guest coming up. We're going to really talk figure skating next week. And Ed Thomas, her ballet and figure skating columns, uh, making uh, such inroads into the types of training uh, with uh, ballet in the world of figure skating. And then uh, one of the top coaches in the world of figure skating just had some national competitors. Amber Gill will be returning following week, Monique for Port, the world of EFT, emotional uh, physical training, uh, the tapping world is a very, very exciting, natural way uh, to enhance wellness, deal with all sorts of challenges, um, 
energy focus training, emotional focus training, EFT tapping. Following week, Debbie Peterson, uh, she was a uh, uh, mayor on the West Coast for years, very involved in the interactions of the community, local government. Uh, we want to ask her about that whole world. How do we make some of these changes we talk about all the time on the sports doctor and get them into the communities, uh, get people to listen, uh, will be, uh, will be joining us. You know, Bob Guida, um, from when I first met him in the late seventies, made such a big deal about the core. You know, back then, I don't know if anybody knew how to spell it. Maybe Jack LaLanne, a few other greats in the world of training, the whole midsection. And it's a necessity in no matter what the sport was, whether you were running and jumping, whether you were throwing, whether you were uh, spiking a volleyball, shooting a basketball, pitching, uh, the sprinting, changing direction in soccer, the core, the abs, the midsection, the obliques, the low back and the kinds of training and focus that became now one of the staples in sports medicine. Uh, and Bob made such a big deal out of that uh, at very, very early ages, no matter what the sport or level, posture. Yeah, <laughs> one of the jokes was if you were around Bob Guide, you were an inch taller. You know, you kind of like got that posture, those hip uh, pointers out, and uh, uh, definitely made an enhancement in posture. And, of course, he it was such a big deal uh, uh, with Bob where he would be creating all sorts of instability. So your posture would work harder uh, in corrective poke uh, areas. Regardless of your age or fitness level, you want to include exercises. Be a good physical therapist, personal trainer. Learn how to work your core, strengthen that all-important area. Uh, some emails. Pat said, is foot type inherited? Great topic. Uh, often it is. Often we might see, gee, you know, she's flat-footed just like her mother and grandmother. Gee, you know, uh, she's developing these hammer toes and, and bunions like her uh, parents and, and grandparents. You know, gee, he's got high arches just like his dad. Gee, he's bow-legged, just like his father and grandfather. So often we see bunions are a great example of hammer toes of foot type that often develops these deformities because of the particular foot mechanics. So we tell parents all the time to pay attention to that. We pay big attention to it in the book, hashtag hey sports parents, that often uh, a foot a type can be inherited and the earlier you pay attention, uh, the smarter you are. Often I'm putting five, six, seven, eight-year-olds in orthotics because their mother and grandmother and aunts uh, uh, develop bunions, the enlarged, dislocating big toe joint, or hammer toe uh, deformity, uh, trying to uh, correct any abnormality in the foot mechanics as that young boy or girl is developing. Pay attention. Jeff says my son's a 12-year-old hockey player. Uh, I'm just interested. Are orthotics proactive? Yes, Jeff, they are. I have found in the world of hockey, in the world of figure skating, especially even in the world of speed skating, done properly, orthotics are a step up. You are creating optimum foot ankle alignment. You are enhancing the foot's ability to become a lever and spring system to push you off. What we've seen in skating over the years, even though most of the time we would use orthotics in your son's age in hockey or figure skating, boys or girls, we were using orthotics because there was a problem, something hurt. The, the, the ankles hurt, the knees hurt, the shins are a problem, the heels are a problem. What we found over the decades was that uh, all aspects of skating improved. Besides the orthotics done properly by sports podiatry, uh, uh, ideally, uh, not only would help the problem, but would enhance things like edging and balance and stability and landing, speed, everything improved. So absolutely, if your son's playing serious hockey, playing three times a week or more, and uh, you're looking to prevent problems, 
enhanced performance. You want to pay attention to the role of orthotics. Quickly, Terry said a 13-year-old daughter volleyball player dealing with shin splint, shin splint, shin splint. Check foot mechanics. See physical therapy, sports podiatry. Get a diagnosis. Uh, 80% of chronic shin splint problems are foot-related. Orthotics are magic, along with strengthening. I think we got in under the wire, everybody. The book, hashtag, hey, sports parents. See you next week. Thanks, everybody.